Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the greatest podcast of all time. I'm your host, Dougie McDoubles, and beside me is the greatest co-host of all time, Ray McFlurry II. Now, we have had some incredible times on this podcast, some incredible days, and let me tell you, nothing brings me more joy than to have this man in our podcast, in our home, in our chateau, in our dojo, if you will, than this man right now. He has been a titular character in both of our lives, a dear friend indeed. Yes. And no one more than I, man, I have never been happier to have a guest on the podcast a fitting way for the reboot in the new series yeah. of saturday morning cartoons ladies and gentlemen we have young mr tyler how are you my friend <laughs> oh dude i'm i'm doing good i'm doing good uh like i said haven't talked to you in i don't know like three four years something like that i talk to ray every now and then but like since since i moved away i it's like i see ray like once a year so i mean it's it's just cool to be on here talking to you guys. It brings me back to like uh, playing basketball in the old gym and stuff at Hartford. But yeah. hell yes, yes. There is no there's no more talked about person in our lives on this podcast than you. Like uh, other than ourselves or Ruby or something. Like, <laughs> yeah. There's more Tyler stories than any other person. Yeah. There's yes. no there's no guest that we have talked <laughs> about getting on here more than you. Yeah. I was stoked, man. Yeah. Ab- absolutely. It's it's always nice when. Although, I'll be honest, it's always nice when people that I always idolized or really enjoyed hanging out with still like me as we get older, you know what I mean? It's always a fucking, <laughs> it's always a pleasure to have you on, man. Yeah, dude. Uh, Initially, I want to just start this off strong. Me, me and you, Tyler, we are the only ones that have finished it. Doug petered out about episode four. Oh, dude. Uh, so... Yeah, first of all, uh, I just what, what is your rating out of 10, would you say, just for the entire series? Rating out of 10. If I'm yeah. talking about the whole series, bro, I'm, I'm, giving it, I'm giving it a solid 9. Ooh, I love it. Solid 9. 9's, that's solid. I like that. Yeah, there were definitely some problems, but overall, yeah, the, I think that was just... Just a few, just a few, but... Like, I mean, as yeah. close to perfect as I think a live adaptation could have been. Yeah, I don't yeah. That that's a good way to put it. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the problems people had were just expecting a one to one recreation of the best cartoon ever made, you know? It yeah. was just a, a strange thing to be uh like there were obviously gonna be changes, there were gonna be differences, like the, it wasn't just gonna be one to one and people just hated it because of the differences immediately and it was just Frustrating to see like all of the Twitter hate and TikTok videos of, I'm like I don't know, it's yeah. exhausting. Bro, I just don't exhausting. understand it. I thought they did so well with so many things, even with the changes. I did too. I think one of the things, and you will know this because you, it's in the first episode, so right. you've seen this. Yeah. They started it off with uh, just something to give people to hate on really quick, and that was Ang flying. You know, his little air gliding down at the start with yeah. Mark Yatso. Yeah. Like, that was just... I saw so many people comparing that to how Zaheer flew in Legend of Korra. And I was like, he's clearly just gliding, being goofy. Yeah. But it just... They made it look like it was flying and kind of just set the tone for to give people, the, yeah. like, the opportunity to shit on it. Um, A lot of good things to it, but, yeah, it started off kind of... I don't know. Kind of odd at first. A little bit odd at first, I yeah. I didn't enjoy the the intro. I wish it would have been the same as the original. I'll be honest. <laughs> Listen, I was... the The... The new intro was fine. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed it. I just However, wish Grand Grand wouldn't have just read off a sheet of paper doing the exactly. like the callback thing. That was some of the worst thing in the whole series of Grand Grand. I, I wish it was, she was, she was agree awful. with that. Oh man, she was bad. And I was excited. I, I she was in Res Dogs. I'm pretty sure yeah. that's she got cast in it because she was in Reservation Dogs. You know, I'm like stoked. I've watched her stuff before and it was the worst performance I've seen almost ever. Like, it was really bad. I have some more uh, beef with Grand Grand about some other things, but... Let's hear it. Let's get the Grand Grand hate out, man. Oh, yeah. What's okay. up with so, it? Th- there's a couple of different things that are related to Grand Grand that I hated. One, the fact that she had the freaking uh, role to teach guitar a waterbending. I absolutely... No, I love that. No, no. You hated it? I hated it. I kind of, oh, I kind of enjoyed I'm it. Like, I won't dude, even lie. Bato and Hakoda would have not stood for that. If that was something that endangered people in that village, they would have freaking, that, that piece of paper would have been torched. 
And the Man. thing is, too, is with that, like, so it's cool in the fact that it may have been a southern water bending scroll, which was like a lost culture or whatever. But dude, in yeah. like in the series, it's like, you know, the pirates steal it and they're like, yeah, we got this up north. It's like, that's where that was supposed to be from. And then to screw up with the water bending stuff even more, whenever Katara gets up to the north in the end, freaking with Paku, like there's no mention that Paku and Grand Grand knew each other and like, all the stuff with Katara's necklace that. and all of that stuff. And it's just like, bro, grand grand, like it just didn't make sense to me. And I didn't like it because like that, because that whole thing too sets up like problems with the water bending. And I'm sure we'll get to that later, but um, that whole thing just like ruined so much of like Katara. I feel like specifically, I feel like they did a really big disjustice to Katara's like development in the first season. Yeah, she didn't. She didn't have the rage. I didn't feel like she was as mad as she was in the cartoon. Like a lot of her fight with Paku in the cartoon, she like she was trying to kill his ass. Yeah, she was throwing like real shit at Paku, you know, and she was mad that he only looked at her as a little girl. Yeah, and then in, in the live action, like the actress just was not able to portray that level of. There was just yeah, like, no anger really to Katara in the live action to me. She was just kind of a little bit bland. Yeah, she was just. I I totally agree, and like. You know, she's throwing the ice discs and stuff like that at Paku still. But, like, the also thing is, is, like, first the, like, sexism hate from, like, Paku to they also put it on um, the girl teaching them how to heal and kind of split that up. And that kind of, like, divvied her anger, I think, towards two different people. And that was, like, part of that. Yeah, there was just, I I feel like Katara's development was all based around, like, and there was some other stuff with like you know Aang never learned any water bending in the whole freaking first season, and like part of Katara's whole development yeah. was like being pissed off that Aang was better than her at it at yeah. first. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I didn't mind the uh, the change to the scroll, Grand Grand giving that to her because that kind of that makes sense to me because I could have saw that as like kaya having it for her to learn eventually or something maybe you know like it's just handed down kind of thing the pirate thing it would have been kind of weird for them to yeah i guess it could have but i didn't i didn't mind the change you know it kind of gave grand grand a little bit more of a character but yeah yeah. i didn't mind the fact that it didn't come from the pirates it was just the fact that it was like this was this really big endangerment because the fire nation was after every southern waterbender and they're yeah. like, oh, well, you know, even though they're trying to kill every waterbender, we just have this waterbending scroll lying around. <laughs> yeah. What did you think about, um, what did you think about Grand Grand uh, knowing Aang was the Avatar? Like that, like her whole, she was kind of driving the narrative from the start there. Yeah, I'm just not sure about that, man. Um, I wasn't yeah. a fan. I couldn't, I, I'm sorry. I just, I couldn't get behind it. I, I don't they think took away it was some like of the kiddiness of him. Yeah, I think her, her telling him there like you're the last Airbender, everybody's dead. It's been a hundred years. You're the Avatar. I think that kind of takes away a lot of the purpose of the first few episodes of his like little me- his him. little meandering journey or whatever. Yeah. you know, like he's going different places trying to do the yeah. He's riding the elephant penguin boys. sledding he's getting on the, the elephant koi. penguin yeah. sledding. They took a lot of that and like, fun loving part of him out. Yeah, because we still hit like those same places and those same beats, but it wasn't like for the same reasons. It wasn't yeah. because he was a kid. It was because he needed to go to Avatar Kyoshi's like temple thing. You know, yeah, that's why they went. You know, it wasn't. They just happened to, to kind of go there. That's just where he ended up. Um, I kind of thought that sucked. Yeah, um, the, the Kyoshi thing. Since we're on Kyoshi, did you watch that far? Yes. Okay, so one thing. Sokka putting on the makeup and getting humbled and having to put on the makeup to learn from so- uh, so- from Suki was essential. That is one of the best parts of Sokka's arc. Absolutely. Oh, my God. And they don't put him in the makeup in the live action, and it hurt my freaking it, heart. It, I won't lie. I was waiting for it, and I went, oh, oh I guess they uh, cut that out. I guess they'll Bro. put it in episode three. And I was like, wait a second. Bro, they didn't no, even really put to... him in the uniform. Yeah, dude. It, it, it was a problem. Was, it was stupid. I thought that was such a missed missed part from the cartoon. Yeah. And also, why? what is the point of having Suki wash her face paint off before the fight? 
Why can't she just go into the fight like full kill too? Yeah. That didn't make any sense to me. That was just a little dumb thing little that I noticed. Time. But I was like, why the fuck? Why does she wash her face Probably a little before Kyoshi for shows up? Like the actual oh, ugly maybe. who it may, was. Maybe it may have been something for the actress. Yeah. I don't know. What yeah, did you, I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure either. You're not sure? you have any other thoughts on Kyoshi and how the the differences were? Obviously, so I love like Unagi or anything. There's like the Unagi and like Elephant Koi thing and like all the little girls don't like love Aang or whatever. But uh, like I said, they took a lot of oh, the yeah, no foaming part mouth of guy. them out. And that kind of is with Aang's character a little bit. They definitely made him a lot more serious, a lot more quickly. Um, I do, however, really like the changes of him meeting Kiyoshi first and meeting the different yes. like yeah. avatars. Um, I love especially that. like you get to see a lot more of that personality that you'd never know in the show if you hadn't had like reading backstory history. Um, so I yeah, like and that I whole like Kiyoshi that. fight was super badass. Yes. Also, uh, Suki's mother. Fun fact, guys. Got Ray immediately. Got his ass. She is the mother of Kira and Teen. Damn Wolf. it! I knew it, dude. Uh, also, speaking of okay. Kira and Teen Wolf, she plays old girl who's on the uh, who's the vil- who's the the bad chick, the villain, not Azula, the other one that's riding the fucking monster. I always forget. Oh, June. Right, that's in the series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so she that's who she plays in this in the live action. Okay. So here's a little fun fact: that's two Teen Wolf actors. It's a segment that we do that I constantly no, try to he, reference the Teen Wolf actor in today. He doesn't try. He seamlessly and unconsciously always references Teen Wolf. In some way, he can bring it back to fucking Teen Wolf, which I've never watched. I don't have a thing against it, but it's just amazing <laughs> how much he can work it in there. Yeah, um, I've never seen it either. Yeah, Suki's yeah, mother was either? like a titular character in like the last like three seasons of Teen Wolf. I kind of um, I liked the change to to the. The whole concept of it all. The leader of the island. Like, but before it was just that guy, wasn't it? Yeah. The mom was a dude. change. It was just the dude, and he was just kind of milk toast. Okay, here's whatever you need. Yeah. But I kind of liked how she was more hesitant, and, you know, we've been neutral this whole time for a reason. Yeah, I That's get cool it. to flesh out, out a character here. that didn't necessarily need to be, you know? It's just kind of cool to have. How did y'all feel about the live action, like, how did you feel about the live action Iroh and Zuko together? Bro. How, how'd you like their chemistry? Dude, I, Dallas Liu, I, Dante Bosco is the GOAT. No one is going to beat Dante Bosco. But that Zuko in live action is so freaking good, man. He was so sassy yeah. and so just great. Oh, he was just perfect. I just love every time he was in a scene, it was just, he was like the only only one of the teenage actors that wasn't, every, every scene he was in was a banger. You know, there were no bad scenes for Zuko, I don't think. Yeah. Like he was killing it every, everything he was in. I have. I'm not the biggest fan of Katara. Katara didn't get a lot to work with. Her yeah. script was pretty stripped down, which is wild because it's not about her this season. Yeah, the first the first book, obviously. And However, it it's, contributes a lot to her character to get yeah. all the way up to her fighting Zuko at for the Moon Spirit. Yeah, and there's a lot that they left out. I feel yeah, like there's there's quite a bit. Another thing is like stripping her her arc down a little bit why what did you think what did you guys think about the cave of two lovers uh katara <laughs> and Sokka being in it instead of ang that was weird as hell that was weird for sure because like that the whole part so of that weird. was like that you know they figure out and that's like the beginning of you know katara and ang's little love deal and then katara's yeah. just in there with her brother <laughs> with her brother yeah it was so weird yeah, and so like yeah, one they thing, don't get one separated of the or like, like, like it was it was odd. Like I didn't weird. They they, yeah. they just had to condense so much that they had to split the stories in some different ways to make it. Yeah. And I didn't mind most of them, but like the the just them in the cave of two lovers didn't make much sense. Yeah. It was weird. Yeah. I, I just I think it's bullshit that we didn't get. Then I'm like, just do a callback to like. We got a shoehorn little bit of it, but it was. They should have been in the fucking tunnels with them. Like, that was crazy to just have that little bit at the start. If you're going to do that, then just just have a callback to the song of like Secret Tunnel or something. Like, they kind of threw in with the like, you know, he was in the, you know, Earth Kingdom with the canyon crawlers or whatever. 
Jesus Christ, man. Or like the <laughs> band be like a famously local band, and that's their like like they're the only people that make it out with their scene. Like they that's, oh, how, that's yeah. how they got famous. They you know there's there's a yeah. band randomly in the in the town or something like that. But no. <clears throat> One change I did like was uh, making Oma and Shu both the same gender. Mm. I thought that kind of made the forbidden love story make more sense than just they're I from like- towns that didn't like each other very much. Yeah. <laughs> same. That was kind of cool. Um, what else? What did you think of the changes to Boomy? Did you see the changes yes, to Boomy? Yes, dude. He's just, like, real mad at Aang for being gone, and he reveals himself, like, or, or there's, like, the reveal that it's Boomy, like, right as soon as they meet, which kind of makes more sense, but... I mean, uh, it one makes... One thing I did like, I've, I've said it in podcasts past, yes. I want to see that Boomy, Aang, hey, how the hell are you still look this way moment, and we didn't get that in the cartoon, and the first thing he said is, how do you still look the same, and I just felt... Vindicated. I felt vindicated. The justice. But vindicated. his character was weird. What do you think of it? I his character. loved some of that because, like, dude, okay, for real, though, if you're Boomy and you know Aang and you know that, you know, that was the Avatar, dude, wouldn't you be pissed if, like, he's been gone for, like, 100 years and, like, well, I mean, obviously, Absolutely. like, he was frozen in an Absolutely. iceberg and he didn't have anything to do about it. But, yeah, yeah dude, I'd be ticked, too. It's like, oh, bro, yeah. you let this happen Without for this long? Yeah, of course. I yeah. like the different trials that he did and basically, you know, being ticked off and then came around at the end. Uh, what I'm curious yeah. about, though, is if in the end, Boomy's still going to be a member of the White Lotus or not because of those changes. Yeah, and that's a great question. That is a great question. I did like some of his anger, too, because Boomy's character, you know, he's never... When he was a kid, at least, you know, in the flashbacks a little bit you see of him, he just seems like a goofy kid. He doesn't seem like the war general or, like, the leader of the last stronghold of the Earth Kingdom in a hundred-year war, you know? Yeah. Like, he's clearly a very changed man. He's had to fight his whole freaking life because there's been war since, you know, since he was... A hundred years. Yeah. So it kind of made made a lot of sense that he wasn't so fun-loving and goofy and, oh, go on your way, here you go. Which then in season two, test. that'll change whenever they go back to Omashu because Boomy wouldn't have been a character then now with the way he's acting. That would have just been like, ah, I gave up. That's right. That's right. Who knows? Like, it, who knows where they go from here? There were so many freaking major changes. Like, uh, I was a big fan of condensing uh, Omashu, Jet, and the Mechanist all into it. Like, that would, felt really seamless to me. Like, that was a good... Uh, Transition? Yeah. Wait, wait. Not even transi- not transition. Uh, a good way to just break it down into yeah. one episode and inter- yes. interchanging plot lines. And it was kind of... It was a really, cool. really creative and way to do it justice to weave it all together without leaving a lot of the integral shit out that... Yes. They left a lot of stuff out where they kind of like did niche kind of half-assed callbacks to certain stuff in the series, this, that, and the other, but I enjoyed how they were able to interlock certain episodes together and make it make sense. Yeah. Because that was a lot of episodes they would have to do for just the... Eight, what, what do we get? Eight episodes? Yeah. Eight episodes. Yeah. Uh, I think was, they did a really good job with all of the condensing. The only part I didn't like <laughs> about some of the condensing uh, with, like, the Hay by Fire Temple, like, an Aang has to separate and go do that, and then the Mechanist and yeah. uh, all that... The only thing that I have a problem with is um, it doesn't show off Sokka's inventive side it very much. Um, like, you yes. don't get a lot of that. And that yep. is actually a pretty important part of his character. And, like, you get it a is. mention of it in that, you know, first scene with the mechanist where he's like, he, you know, he told me I should have been an engineer too. But, like, you don't see Sokka, yeah. like, doing the little fireballs to get Aang into the fire temple. And you don't see, like, those right. little those little pieces. Almost the they're kind of like in a video game, the small little mini things that you have to do to get like to a, like a higher level. Just the way, the way they kind of cut that out, it was, it was imperative. It was partial to his character. Like it's he, him being a tinkerer and just being like, I can figure out ways to do bending without them. Like it was very like, I don't know if you played like the star Wars games that just came out where it was just like, you had to like put like a certain thing here or a certain thing there to get like a higher like a higher level up on this wall to get into a different area like stuff like like the, with the fireball to get into the fire uh for the fire nation and shit like that like that it needed to be in there like it, it being left out was yeah kind of like an injustice for it almost in my head 
Yeah. What uh, one thing I want to go back to. So when uh, Ira was captured, right? What did you think about the Earth Kingdom general? Did you see him? Mm-mm. The Earth Kingdom general that like beat him up or whatever. Yeah, that yeah. character wasn't in the cartoon, and I thought that was like a really cool moment to kind of show the war criminal Iroh side, which I love. Yeah. I love showing Iroh is not the good guy from the start. You know, yeah. showing more of that. Dude, I never kind thought of side I of would him. love Iroh more than I did in the cartoon, but I think the live action Iroh is even better. I really do, bro. Um, dude, I really like it. I really like that Earth Kingdom general part, and like you see more backstory with him with Zuko and Zuko comforting him, and that's why Iroh's just so attached to yes. him. Yes, dude, Luten's funeral that was that made me so freaking emotional. That was one part I cried at for sure. Yeah, um, look at my notes. Hold on. Um, what did you think of Wan Shi Tong being in the spirit world as soon as he showed up? I like it because I hate Wan Shi Tong because I hate owls, and so I have to see less of them. I hope. <laughs> I forgot you hate owls. Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Perfect. Hey, hey, that's a good answer. That's, that's how you what? Do that. Uh, I really liked uh, one part. Monk Gyatso is just such a good character, man, and I love seeing more of him. Yeah, I loved the part with him getting to tell Aang, Aang, you couldn't have done anything if you would have stayed. Mm-hmm. I really freaking liked him getting to tell Aang that. I, that was... Uh, yeah, the Monk Gyatso stuff was nice. Uh, what did you think about like Yue being in the spirit world and Sokka meeting her that way first? Dude, that was cool. That was a cool way to show that she's not just a normal girl, you know, like to kind of give her a little bit of a backstory to why she could take the place of the moon spirit. Like it definitely right. gives her like more was... of that like spiritual aspect and realm that like in the in the show you yeah. didn't really get it first. Yeah, I thought that was great. The changes to her character was great. The only bad part about Yue was that wig. It was hideous and so bad. Did you see it? <laughs> yeah. It was so bad. It was so what? bad. Now with them cutting certain things out and them doing like the smaller eh, version of Secret Tunnel, realistically, when this gets to that scene, are we really gonna get the "That's Rough, Buddy" from Zuko? Oh, we better, we better. Like, cause I thought about this intensely, cause I want to know, like, do you, are you, do you really think we're gonna get him to say like, "That's rough, buddy"? I mean, the way it happens was pretty brutal to him. I feel like. I feel like he deserves it. That's rough, buddy. I think the fans deserve it too. Yeah. Honestly, I think we've been through enough. No shit. What? Um, what else do I have on here? Oh, another part I loved that was just kind of a small thing. Ang's bison whistle being something that Boomy made for him, I thought was so fucking cool that oh, they didn't have to put in there. Yeah, that was so cool. That yeah, was a really, really cool liked that. part. Homies make homies uh, things. Yeah. Oh, okay, another thing. Oh, one of the creepiest things from the cartoon they fixed in the live action. Okay. Do you remember the original June story in the live action where Iroh's super creepy and sexual to her? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that I love that they fixed it and just and they flopped flipped it, it on him. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Just oh there's no uncomfortableness to it. Thank you for that. <laughs> Everyone loves that. Oh yeah. Everyone loves it. That was cool. Um What did you think about Roku's character? I thought he was quite different from his cartoon version. Sure. Avatar Roku. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, he was he really, was... really goofy. That was strange. It's really weird to see him that, that goofy. He was definitely more like of a stern, more serious character, but like, yeah, you know, and then yeah. he's, yeah, just this total goofball whenever they get in there. It was kind of funny, but it was, it was definitely it felt weird and out of character at first, but then he starts giving, you know, Aang that real stern advice there at the end at yeah. least. But yeah, I thought it was weird. Very weird. Uh, one thing I also hated that we didn't get was the damn uh, Roku fight scene where he takes over. I thought there was, there was just no reason to cut that. I felt like and there was no reason to change that to June either. I thought Zuko should have been there just like it was. Or what, I, don't, I don't remember how the timeline was now, but I feel like it should have been not June. It should have been something where Roku had an excuse to have to fight. Right, right, right. It was crazy they didn't have it to me. Yeah, that and was... And they made an excuse wow. for Karuk not to fight either. 
which, which I mean, yeah, okay, the Karuk thing canon, makes but... sense, though, because his whole big yeah. thing was, which I love freaking how they changed Ko, um, because that was creepy, and I love that, and I love the darker tone with it. But, Bro, like, he was awesome. Like, Karuk, like, couldn't even fulfill his, like, duties as an avatar because of how corrupted he got. But I like that they turned it to where Karuk right. was like, I had to be in there, or else the spirits were going to, like, just run amok in the real world and be causing yeah. problems, kind of like, you know, they did in, like, Legend of Korra Season 2, I think it was, or whatever. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. Dude. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, the Karuk stuff at least made sense. He's a really interesting avatar, because he, he, his life force was really shortened because of the dark spirits and the corruption, and yeah, his whole, his story's really sad. Because he had to. Uh... Did you read the Kiyoshi novels, either of you? I haven't read them. No? I know. I know bits and pieces here and there, though. I know what you have told me. Okay, so the start of the Kiyoshi novels, the people they're following are were Karuk's team avatar. So they're trying to find the next avatar, which ends up being Kiyoshi. And so it's like uh, Kel Sangs, who is an Airbender, and Wanju or something's the uh, Earthbender. And they like go into the backstory and like they they thought he was a failed avatar, right? Like that's why I love the changes in the fleshing out of him because they thought he was a failed avatar because they did not know he was fighting the evil spirits. Like his team avatar never knew. They thought he was a drunk, a surfer, or whatever, you know. Yeah, in like just reality, going out partying. Yeah. But really, he was just always in the spirit world, always fighting these unimaginable fights because they're just trying to get into the real world to fucking wreak havoc. So yeah, it's interesting. I love anything Karuk, especially in the live action. Like it made sense that he was corrupted and couldn't do his little fight bit, but um, yeah, Karuk's just a cool ass character to me. Yeah. I just love talking about <laughs> Karuk. I think it's really interesting that for like most of the times Aang's in the Avatar state, like he has to be at somebody's temple for them to take over his body. That has been interesting. That was a weird change, yeah. I also, I think that too. I was wondering about that. That's I forgot about talking about that earlier with and Kiyoshi. Was that also? Did they say that that is the only time that they can like communicate? I think so. Yeah, not just like them take over. That's the only time that he can like meditate and talk to them. Yeah, that's a really weird change too. Yeah, because may, does that change the lion turtles in the end? Who knows? I don't know. Yeah, no idea. Maybe they're just they're. Who knows? Who knows? Um, I know people have their qualms, but I've really liked it. Dude, it was good. One of the best changes to me, maybe the best change, something that's new, not from the cartoon, was the addition of the 41st Division. Jeez. Oh, my God, I bawled, bro. I cried my eyes out. It was just something I did not see coming because you can just you can put it right in front of my face, but until you tell me, I don't see the twist. That's just how I've always been. And so when he was just like, why do you, you know, this and this and this, and this is why you're alive, and it was just... Oh, it was tears already, and then Zuko comes back, and he's got them all at attention, showing respect, and I was just fucking yeah, full it was, on tears, bro. It was oh, crazy, man, it was too, such a Zuko's good just such about, like, so much about honor and, like, all of those things. And, like, like it's, it's a point where, like, you don't see it coming because, like, Zuko's never like, well, I saved your damn lives. Yeah, you never know, bro. Three years on the boat, and no one ever fucking knew. That's crazy. That's crazy. And I, I like the change, too, because it's before it was just about you should feel sorry for him because he got scarred by his dad. Yeah. That was why. And now it's a whole other Now, thing. yeah, the impact hits so much fucking harder. Oh, my gosh. I think we have separate views about this, but I'd love to hear this. Cause, Ray, don't you not like Zuko's Agni Kai? Yeah, I thought it was weird. I did. You said uh, it's weird to me. I like... In the cartoon, he doesn't do anything. He just lays on the ground, bowing to his dad until his dad burns him. I'm pretty right. sure. But the live action, he got up and was deflecting attacks and stuff. That's fine, but I didn't like when he fought back. I feel like that wasn't... It was just so different that it was hard for me to like, I think, is why it was so different. I don't really know why I, I didn't like it. it. I just don't think I did. I liked it because, you know, Ozai was, you know, prompting him as, like, you know, get up and fight, even though Ozai's obviously done with him already at this point. And, like, whenever Zuko, yeah. you know, because he's still honoring his dad by fighting him. And then that one moment that they have where Zuko, like, holds back 
where he was gonna like literally attack his dad's face on the exact same side that Zuko's oh, burned yeah. on. That oh, and like that. dad burns him at the end for like holding back and not showing you know mercy and he's basically like you didn't honor me by doing this it makes so much more sense oh. to me why Zuko's so angry and conflicted and like really about honor but he doesn't know what honor is because his dad's like toying with him and i love yeah. that i thought that yeah, yeah that okay. was that was great for the character okay. i think it was sick i i enjoyed the acne kai i didn't think i understood why but i think it just it added a little bit more depth where they had to take out certain stuff out. Where they added, they added a little bit more depth and they sprinkled a little bit more into certain aspects yeah. of certain scenes and they took a little bit of other stuff out that we, wasn't needed and wasn't needed at the same time. That's still up for debate. But I, I think that was... Him fighting back made him made you relate a little bit more to him so you saw it even more. Yeah, well, yeah, I loved it. One thing I feel like the live action has done well is, yeah, they've taken some backstory away from like Katara and Sokka and some elements away from them. But they've really added so much to like Ozai and Azula and even just Zuko and Iro. Wow. And like yeah. they've developed and fleshed out their characters so much more. Yep. Um at the expense of those others, but so like at at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, are these ones right? Not really, but like I feel like all, everybody that they've done with the Fire Nation has just been every change they've made has just been unreally cool because like even with azula it makes so much more sense why she's so wicked and evil and stuff like that with her dad like toying with her and yeah. making you know basically turning zuko into this you should hate him and you should be better than him and all of this thing and that's how she ends up even yeah. getting the lightning bend and gets let loose at the end you know like she does in season two because you don't even see azula until season two in the yeah Every CGI thing that they did was just so good. Like, I also loved Hey Bye. Um, and, like, yeah, Poe that was and like, all of that stuff. And I love that darker tone that they're taking with it because I know mm -hmm. for later on that's going to make so many things so much cool. Dude, I'm I'm waiting to get to Hama, and I just want to see the blood bending, and I want to see her pulling blood out of people's bodies, dude. Like, through the eyes, yeah. through the ears. Like, yeah. I just want to see some, like, gruesome – gruesome Dude. stuff and with this tone that they're taking i think it can be done and like just the earthbenders actually you know basically stabbing people with the spears that they've got and stuff yep. like that i think that just opens yep. so much more room for things like that and koizilla and just like actually wiping them out you know you're not going to get ang saying stupid crap like i've never killed anybody before yeah i i wanted to ask you this because ray and i have talked about this i want to say at, at least three times on the podcast as a fellow Avatar fan, as they got older, do you think Katara ever taught Aang how to bloodbend? I don't think bending would have been something, if Aang could even do it, that he would ever do. That's usually the answer I get from people, especially from, like, Ray has been very adamant That's on that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I wanted to ask your opinion, because I love to ask people about that, just like, Ray, like, do you think he ever, like, attempted to learn it or she tried to teach it or she got over her own trauma from it where she was able to the only to time i could see that he might have possibly used it would have been even on himself whenever like he was fighting yakone whenever he was older yeah that's kind of the only reason i would see him to even want to learn it was after that fight, because he got pieced until he went into the Avatar state at the end. Yeah. And then he took his blood blood bending or his bending away completely with yeah. cosmic energy or whatever. Which that's one thing that yeah. I, I love too is like you guys had that video about like, you know, was Korra or Aang like the better Avatar and stuff? And uh, the answer is obviously Korra. She has tougher villains. And that's partially due to yes. scaling and things like that. But if you look yeah. at like Korra's villains, every villain Korra defeats. She doesn't need the Avatar state for every freaking major villain. Defeats. Aang uses the Avatar state and the access to all of his past lives to defeat every major villain he ever faces. Preach, bro. Whittable Oh, my God. Preach. Yes. That was Whittable the greatest answer of dude, all time. Dude, all of Korra's villains hate her so much. Yeah. They all hate her so much, and they hate the idea of the Avatar. That is the difference. Ozai is just Saturday morning cartoons villain to me. 
Every one of like the Red Lotus are all adult master benders. Like that's crazy. D- yeah. Like the Dark Avatar. Like like Unalak's crazy. Even Kuvira mm-hmm. is like maybe a better metal bender than both of the the Beifong sisters. You know, like she's so right. good. She's so damn good. And also she's like Earth Kingdom Hitler or whoever her <laughs> equivalent was. Yeah. Like she, that's such a crazy ass character. So much crazier than Ozai to me. Yeah, for uh, sure. Even and Amon. Amon's a fucking bloodbender. Yeah. You know, forgot him. Yeah. One That's has why like I said a whole he's, legion he's behind him. Yeah. Yeah. Of like Ty Lee legion warriors. Of... Yeah. Yeah. That was weird too. I, I didn't know why we didn't get any Ty Lee mention because there were chi blockers and shit in Korra. I thought that was weird. Hmm. Man, I appreciate you being on the podcast, man. This has been an incredible episode. You are the absolute legend. All right. Well, First I've... guest other than Ruby. Appreciated being on here. It was nice. <laughs> Love to having you, man. It was it truly was great, buddy. It's so good to hear from you. Please tell your family I said hello. Um sure thank will. you so much for being on the podcast, buddy. Truly. It's it's doing it's it means the world. Truly. Hey, anytime you guys want me on, I'm willing to hop on. I obviously have to do this more so I stop cutting people off, but <laughs> No, nah, bro. No, you didn't it's do okay. any of that. Everyone grows up, this, that, and the other. It's all right. I, you you moved across the country. You don't hate us or anything. No, not at all. I just moved literally no. about as far away as I could, and then I got maybe a tiny bit closer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> maybe a little. I love it. He said, "I don't want to leave. I'm an American, but also, I don't really want to be anywhere near where I'm from. So, like, what's the cl- far? What's the best for that?" He said, "Oh, okay." <laughs> Love it. <clears throat> oh shit. Tyler, thank you so much for being on the podcast, my friend, and talking Avatar. It is the abs- means the absolute world to us. We have been talking about you from the very beginning. You have been a huge guest myth and icon for us to get on the podcast. So thank you, buddy. All right. Love yeah, it. It was awesome. We man. love you so much, man. Love Please you guys too. Night. Bye, buddy. That Ladies and good. gentlemen, thank you so much for watching Saturday Morning Cartoons. I have been your host, Dougie McDowell. Next to me is Ray McFlurry II. Thank you so much to Tyler for being on here, man. I appreciate every memory that we've had together, and so does Ray. Talking to Avatar is hugely important to our podcast, and we hope it's important to you guys. Please drink plenty of water, have plenty of sleep, give all your pets lots of love, and be safe, guys. Bye. Hey, what happened? Why are those squiggles on the screen? Those are called end credits, Patrick. End credits? But I don't want it to end!